With all of the hype surrounding the JP version and their anniversary finally dropping, people may have not noticed that Oku dropped over on the NA version of the game finally. We've been constantly wondering when the rerun's going to be dropping. I'm sure if you're a newer player, you've been hearing a lot of people talking about this event and getting really gassed up for it. And that's because it has some really good rate ups. It brings a lot of very powerful servants back and puts them on very good rate ups. It gives you some good command codes to use. Uh, one of the free to play CEs I actually think is really interesting if you want to use it. Uh, you can use it in some really interesting team builds uh, for boss killing and such. But you might have also seen some people kind of dreading this event coming back around. And that's not because Oku is particularly hard. It's just really long and kind of tedious to do. You do get a lot of very, very good rewards for completing this event. It's a very, very uh, good event in that aspect, right? Like you get so much free stuff basically that it's, you know, kind of hard to not just go ahead and do it because of everything you get. But at the same time, a lot of older players might be kind of dreading this one because it's kind of just screen tapping or if you're playing on an emulator, uh, button clicking the simulator. Basically, the main gimmick behind this event is that there's a lot of just like one AP things that you have to do, meaning it just takes only a singular bit of your stamina right to like go down these different paths on the map and you're basically going to be exploring the map trying to uh, navigate your way through oku and even once you find the correct path you still want to go back and explore the other paths because they usually have like a little uh stage that you can fight an enemy get some rewards or they're a dead end that just gives you some rewards for free and that's why some players might kind of be dreading it it's not hard at all to do. The fights themselves even aren't even that particularly hard to do, aside from the final fight being, you know, Kama, the main center, like, lady for the event, the main servant that everybody's hyped for. Uh, but even then, you can make that Kama fight pretty easy with, you know, the fact that you don't have to fight her at full power. You can kind of just run in and steamroller real quick. Um, and so it could get really annoying on that, and it kind of has this huge duality to it because of that. It's like you get so many good rewards, but at the same time, it can be very, very annoying to complete. So if you're a newer player and you're like, oh man, like I wanted to see what's going on. I need a guide for Oku. You really don't. Like it's just keep navigating through and you should be absolutely fine. The only thing that you kind of have to use a little bit of brain power for is maybe the comma fight, but again, even then, you don't have to fight her at full power. You'll notice if you're not reading the story, which you should be reading the story, that you have this uh, special like mystic code that you're able to use. It seems a little bit stronger. You kind of get stronger as the event goes on. Basically, that's you using comma's power in the event, and it, basically, the more you use it, the stronger the mystic code gets but also the harder the comma fight at the very end is going to be. So you just keep that in mind. You're free to use it, but you're going to have to like drain her power later and you know spend some material to do that. Just that's another little event gimmick that I thought I'd mention. But this event, at least the rerun, actually brings some really nice rank up quests as well alongside this. It gives a buff to Shahrazad. So if you're one of like the two people that actually likes this servant, uh, she'll now get a little bit of a battery attached to herself. Uh, Shahrazad, as much as I'm memeing, is actually not bad. You can actually use her for arts looping, especially now that um, Castoria is in the game. So if you need like an AOE arts caster, um, this definitely helps her out a lot just by giving her that additional battery. Uh, but probably more importantly is Kiara. Kiara finally gets her NP buff, so she's not quite a wet paper towel anymore. You still do ideally want to get her at like NP2 to 3, if not just go ahead and fully max her out to take full advantage of how strong she is. Um, but this makes her a little bit better because if you guys don't know, when they buff a servant's NP, they actually buff the damage scaling for said NP, right? So this kind of helps her out a little bit. I believe what it does is Kiara now at NP2 or NP1 will hit as hard as an unbuffed Kiara's NP2, right? So it kind of buffs her up a little bit. Although as someone that, you know, uses Kiara quite frequently on streams, which if you're not peeping the daily streams that are, you know, on my Twitch, link down in the description down below, what are you doing? But on JP, I managed to acquire Kiara on a GSSR at NP3. So yeah, as someone that has her at higher NP copies over there, I can say that she's definitely worth it. She's definitely a very, very solid servant uh, to go ahead and use. And this is very good for the both of them. It makes them just much, much better. Um, as far as event bonus servants, there's not like a special drop or anything. These servants are just gonna give you extra damage. And we have some pretty solid ones. I mean, obviously, if you pull Kama, you're going to be able to use her to pretty much trash any 
boss or just big beefy enemy in this event. She's just going to steamroll anybody. You could even just bring her to beat up the other Kama. Um, if you don't know, Kama is just a really, really good single target quick assassin that has this little niche in killing alter ego so if you don't have musashi or something uh she's definitely going to be your girl to take out alter egos and no scotty required she's good with just standard buffers like if you just want to use waver with her and reigns or even castoria because castoria does give her a lot of buffs that she would still like to have minus the arts buff obviously i mean it's, it's not bad right because obviously Kama can still use that arts buff to buff her own np gain and the damage of her own arts cards but you guys get what i'm saying she kind of just pairs very well with a lot of support just a very very solid servant in general uh kiara you can actually see as well i mean obviously she got an np buff so she's obviously going to be one of the rate up servants that's going to be getting extra damage shaharazad will also give you an easier time farming this event if you want to use her if you do have her because that extra 50 percent special damage she's getting uh kiara by the way can farm you can use her for looping a lot of people don't know that she can do this right i believe the limit though is that you can have like a archer a lancer or a saber like present on a node for her to be able to loop effectively right from my experience although keep in mind that i do most of my farming with kiara if i want to use her on jp that's np3 and so that might differ on the NA version, but I've heard uh, some people tell me, at least just going by um, anecdotal evidence I have from talking to other people that also use Kiara, that they've been able to kind of get away with similar things depending on their build uh, at NP1 to NP2 as well. So just keep, be aware that you can use them for arts. If you need a quick farmer, Parvati is definitely your girl. Parvati still absolutely crushes when it comes to farming. Um, as does somebody like Say with this event, because Say just kind of needs that little bit of extra damage, and that's exactly what the event is going to be giving her. Um, if you need to absolutely crush bosses, you have people like Kagetor and Kentoki Rider that are both free to plays, although he hasn't been back in quite a while. But Kagetor got a rerun this year, and if you were playing around that time, you should have her, and she can absolutely just obliterate any berserkers or archers in your path okita is going to be very good for challenge quests musashi is going to absolutely decimate people um still looking down the list if you have man this is just actually one of those events that i really wish that okita ultra was quick because they'd be able to loop a lot easier but even people like ushiwakamaru can get some job done for you you can use regend over here you can use Izo if you're one of the lucky people that has them unlike myself um and just I have a very, very solid lineup as far as like event damage bonus servants are concerned. Uh, we do get these pretty good command codes. The Demonic Bodhisattva for one. What do you expect from Kiara, who basically is super effective against uh, rulers because of her Nega Saver uh, passive skill that she has? It gives you pretty much not super effective against them, but you get a special damage bonus against them. And you also get to hit some lawful people for some good damage. This is actually quite good um, if you want to pair it just on pretty much anybody. It just gives them free damage for the card. Um, this one, the Parvati one, not too, too bad. The fact that like you can actually get some little bit of extra damage against charmed enemies is very nice. The two crit scars, not as important, but if you want to use this on somebody like Kama or Parvati, uh, they both have the ability to charm on their own NPs. So you can make this really, really strong in like a brave chain where, you know, Kama may charm the boss with her NP. And then you have this on like a follow-up quick crit card. You're going to be hitting them even harder with that extra 20 percent damage which is really nice finally there's this one i don't know give it to a servant that does something with poison man what do you want from me <laughs> give it to robin hood or something you know there you go give it to robin hood and smack people with uh, <laughs> after they've been poisoned right That's, what do you want from me bro <laughs> just give it to robin hood uh then finally the mat the last thing that people probably care about is the actual rate ups you have both kama and kiara going up on a rate up uh, Munanori, if you get him, is okay. He's an Arts Burst Saber, but he's obviously not the prize for this banner. Both of these servants are absolutely phenomenal. Still phenomenal even to this day over on the JP version. So if you're able to snag either of them, they are quite, quite good. If you're able to max limit break this, this is also not too bad because this becomes a 50% starting charge CE right here, as you guys can see. Not lying, see? Look, I, I know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> and it's, it's not too bad. The quick and critical, I mean... You'd probably rather have like maybe quick and like NP damage or quick and NP gain even. That's a really good one. But quick and critical damage is still a very, very good just general thing to have. You can literally slap this on any quick DPS servant and they absolutely love it. And if for whatever reason you max limit break it, it's compatible with Kama if you want to use it for her because Kama has a 50% battery if you just want to use this. Unfortunately, it's a split 
uh, stat CE. And if you guys don't know that there's different CEs will either just let you get like 2000 max attack or 2000 max HP. For the most part, you really want to get the ones that are 2000 max attack because that extra 2000 attack really can make a difference. Uh, this one's not too bad either. If you need like a budget option for like an NP gain CE or something, uh, this can actually be kind of nice. I know I've used it a few times, but that's just more because I actually just like the art and I just like Kiara in general. But yeah, with all that being said, that's pretty much it for the event. Um, I would go in depth about like, oh, here's like everything you need to know about the comma fight. But to be honest, like, the comma fight's really not too, too bad, especially because if you're having trouble fighting her at like 100% or at like 90% or something, you can always drain your Mystic Code. It'll make it weaker again, but then you actually make the comma fight way easier, right? So you can definitely get away with it. And again, consider that if like you're maybe struggling uh, with the actual like comma fight or if you're struggling with the CQ over here, which I personally just kind of ran in here and slammed my face into a wall. Um, I'm excited to use our Juna Alter that I recently acquired over on NA to just see if he can slam his face into these guys even easier. Um, but if you're struggling with this or the comma fight, just refer back to this and like try to bring some servants that have that extra special damage because God forbid you have comma or you have Kiara, they will just absolutely tear these fights apart. They are just absolutely insane when it comes to just annihilating bosses. Both of their kits are very primed and ready to just destroy all the bosses in this event. But with that being said, let me know in the comments down below if you're excited for Oku, if you're like more of a veteran player and you're kind of dreading it a little bit because you know you're going to just be playing button tapping the simulator for the next 14 days. Um, personally, me, <laughs> what I'm going to be doing, if you look right here, you see that the, uh, the event actually ends on the 15th. And if you look over at the JP anniversary with all the buffs, this ends on the 10th. So personally, I'm going to be taking advantage of the half AP that's over on the JP version of the game and basically try to just mass level up a lot of servants because you get Saint Quartz now on JP for uh, getting your servants to their final, um, their fourth ascension, right? So I'm personally gonna be doing this and then with five days to spare, I'm just gonna run in here and try to finish up the event, which I definitely think is possible. So that's my strategy. Let me know what you guys are doing in the comments down below. Uh, I stream every weekday over on my Twitch. I'm actually going to be adding Saturdays, I think, to my stream schedule. We're gonna see how that goes. It's gonna be like, Monday through Friday is going to be FGO time and then Saturday I'm going to start playing like just other things. I think I'm going to maybe start off by playing like Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel and I'll kind of cycle out through other game suggestions that you guys might have. Um, speaking of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, if you guys are interested in earning a hundred buckaroonies, I'm going to be hosting a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel tournament on August 13th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You should expect it to go on for maybe like five, six. If we're really, really late and things are really, really getting... Uh, hectic i could say maybe seven hours uh first place will get 100 bucks the losers will play a losers bracket for 50 bucks so really no matter what side of the bracket you end up on if you get absolutely trashed or if you do really really well you have a chance to earn some money uh the only restriction is that nobody can play the same deck right i'm forcing everybody to play like just a whole bunch of just different weird decks so for instance i don't know only one person can play crystal beast right or only one person can play dark magician if there's certain engines like the adventure engine or dpe i'm restricting those to one person as well so it's not going to be like everyone's playing adventure hero and adventure blue eyes and adventure abc like i know half of those decks don't work because they need their normal summon but you know what i'm saying if you're interested dm me on discord which is linked down in the description down below leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel for daily fgo content and after all that i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here you guys have yourselves a nice day peace late guys